All right, everybody. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to do something that I never thought I'd have to do on a car like this. But I'm running into a problem here that I can't solve. So I'm going to show you how to use an OBD1 code reader like this here. I bought this at AutoZone for about 20 bucks. Um, I thought it'd be more expensive than that with inflation and prices of crap right now, but it's actually like 20 bucks and plus tax. It was like 25 bucks or something like that. And it came with a book here that tells you all the codes for all the GM cars from like 1982 through 1990 or so. So I'm going to show you how to do that on a OBD1 car like this Oldsmobile here. And uh, my issue is that when I start the car, the high idle doesn't want to kick down even when the car is warmed up. So I just ran this. You probably can't see it from here, but on that temp gauge there, it's almost to warm. I just ran this for about five minutes, and it still wouldn't kick off the high idle. I ran it yesterday for about 25 minutes, and it was definitely on full operating temp, and it still wouldn't kick off the high idle. So just to show you what I mean here. So it's on high idle right now and it seems to be fine, then try and kick it down. As you can see, it doesn't want to kick down the high idle. It's running at about a grand right now, maybe even 1,200. It's supposed to be running around 7, 800 in park. So that's the problem I'm having. And usually the check engine light comes on uh, when that happens, but this time it didn't. It was on a few minutes ago before I started recording, so I bet that's just because of Murphy's Law. It's not going to come on when I'm trying to record it, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you what will, what will happen uh, once you plug the scanner in here. Okay, so basically what you're going to want to do here is go underneath the dash and find your OBD1 uh, scan tool port, which is this guy right here. I don't have a flashlight right now, so you probably can't see it too well on camera, but that's it right here. It's usually right underneath the crotch vent on GM cars. Um, I don't know where they are in Fords. I've never owned a Ford with OBD1 before, um, as well as Chrysler. I don't know. Um, but I've had two of these GMs with the OBD1 on, and that's that's where it's been both times, is underneath this uh, heater crotch vent thing that they've got. So what we want to do is... Take your scan tool, which is really just a little, this thing probably weighs less than a pound, it's not even anything. But it's got two modes on here, as you can see, it's got ECM and ABS. And that A, H, A, B, all that is, is which terminals, as you can see there's only three terminals on there. All that is is selecting which terminals to ground. What this is going to do when you plug it in is it's going to ground out the A and B terminals for ECM and it's going to put it into a closed loop or an open loop. Um, so the computer will tell you what codes it stored the last time it was ran. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work for me because my engine light didn't turn on last time I ran it. It just uh, was giving me a bunch of grief. So plug this into here, just like that. This doesn't seem to want to go. Just a second. Alright, so I actually had to take mine down from the there because the uh, scan tool is too fat to fit in between this thing and the bottom of the dash here so what you do now is you take your scan tool and you stick this on there about like that and it's once again mine's giving me grief here but ugh, once it's on it's on it sort of just sort of sits there like that now what you do from here all right, what you do from here is turn the key and turn it into the on position. And what's going to happen is that check engine light right there is going to flash. It's going to flash one flash like that, one, two. That's 12. That's code 12. It's going to do it three times. One, one, two. Now what that means is that the computer is telling you that it is functioning. So there's the three times. Now it's going to start the code. It's one, one, two, one, one, two. Now that's just telling me that the computer is functioning correct correctly. So it's just giving me code 12. One, two, three, four. Okay, code 40. One, two, 
three, four, wait a minute, hold on, one, two, three, okay, two, one, two, three, four, 24, okay, so that's code 24, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, okay, code 45, one, two, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, okay, so that's it, so basically, what that's doing, is that tells me, let me shut it off here, what that's doing, sorry for not explaining it properly before I did it, but basically, what it's doing, is it's flashing you trouble code, uh, messages, and it's going to flash, uh, a series of times, pause, and then flash another series of times, so it flashes once, pause, one, two, that's code 12, I can't remember what the codes are exactly right now at this moment, um, it was code, uh, 24, I think, and maybe code 45 or something like that, I'll have to go back and watch the video now, but, uh, basically, once you get those codes, um, you take your book here, and you look up the codes and what they mean, and once you get, you know, those codes, uh, you will have a general idea of what's wrong with the car and how to fix it. The other way to do this that people will tell you all over the internet, oh, you don't need to buy this $20 code scanner, all you need to do is, uh, do this, well, you take a paper clip and you bend it so it's like a U shape and you stick it into your OBD1 and short out the A and B ports just like the scanner here does. The reason I don't do that is that is a risk to your computer. And since this is a non, you know, they don't make this computer anymore for this old car and uh, mine's obviously as it's, as it's uh says on the thing, code 12, it's working fine, I don't want to risk shorting my computer out and blowing it up or some crazy thing like that, so I went and bought the code reader so I could do it right, it's up to you if you want to do it with a paper clip, don't, uh, you know, if, if you blow your computer up or something, don't blame me though, because I did it the right way here, not many videos out on YouTube right now uh, showing you how to use the code reader the right way, so with that information, I'll probably do an update video on what exactly the codes were for those of you who have been following this Oldsmobile project. Um, but for those who just came to watch how to do the code reader, there you go. It's pretty simple. Um, I hope I explain it pretty well. There are probably other videos out there that explain it better. But uh, this is the best I can do on short notice. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.